Here we are again, back to solve another case. Just so you know, I've had some trouble with my audio, more specifically my original mic broke and I had to think of a creative way to fix this. So that explains why my voice sounds different sometimes. I promise you it is a temporary thing because I am getting a new one and everything will be back to normal. Now back to the game cause in the previous part we got an address for a new suspect. We wouldn't be a good detective if we didn't go and check that out, now would we? Alright so I have an address now, apparently I did not mess up. I thought I did but I could in this case just try every option <laughs> and it was the last one. Alright so I just wanted to say unfortunately my uh, original mic which I used to record my videos, it broke. Which it shouldn't because it's kind of new. So I have to send it back, unfortunately. In the meantime, I'll have to record with something else. Some people would call that humming and hissing the sound of progress. I'd call it annoying. It's very annoying, yeah. Um, so I hope that this is acceptable. However, it is temporary until my original this mic gets quiet. fixed. It's, it's already gone up considerably in my estimation. You could learn a thing or two from it, Bill. <laughs> So I need to fix this, I think. Can't do anything with this. Who's SBMs? Yes. It says here that Linda Walker is in the upstairs apartment and someone named Douglas MFDL is under the stairs. Douglas, so I want to go there. So just to explain a bit, a bit more. Nobody home. Now what? I have to speak to Douglas. Um, this part I am recording with my other audio because well, when I recorded originally, the sound completely uh, disappeared. So I had to re-record it, but it's just a little part of the game and then I'll go back to my original audio and after that, I'll use this new one. So it's maybe kind of confusing if you hear a difference, but that's why. Until my original one is fixed and then of course... What? Who are you? Are you from the Steamworks? Afraid not, sir. Why not? Damn. Oh well, what can I do for you? So what to say? Can you tell me anything about Linda Walker? Why did you ask if it was from the Steamworks? I wanted to both. Do you know Linda Walker? Of course. Uh, she lives upstairs. Who's asking? I'm Miles Fordham. I'm trying to find Linda so I can speak with her. What's your business with her? I'm afraid that's private. Well, she's out right now. You'll have to come back another time if you want to visit her. Um, do you know when she's home? Have you got any idea when Mrs. Walker will be back? Not for a few days. She told me she was going away for a bit. Ah, that reminds me. She asked me to water her plants while she was gone. I can do that for Just you. Just need to remember where I put the spare key. Do tell. What was that about a spare key? Because <laughs> that's not obvious at all. Did you say something about having a spare key to Mrs. Walker's apartment? Sure. I'm her landlord. I look after the place when she's gone. That's convenient. Got a bit of a green thumb, that one, so she puts me in charge of watering her plants. The trip up is a bit of a pain, though. My hips aren't what they used to be. I can do that for you. And I need you to give me the key. I don't think that will work, but we can try. I'm a private detective, and it's of the utmost importance that I get that key from you. Right. Private <laughs> detective. <laughs> I don't have to do anything you say. You're not really the law. True, so like nice me. try, but I'm not betraying Mrs. Walker's trust so easily. He says that now, but I'm willing to bet he'd do it if it benefited him in some way. Yeah, we need to fix this boiler. Why did you think I was from the Steamworks? Because I contacted them a few days ago when my boiler broke, and nobody has come to repair it yet. I should have known better. Those fools always take their time, if they even bother showing up at all. Meanwhile, I'm stuck in here with nothing but cold water. If I catch pneumonia and die, you'll know who to blame. Sorry to bother you, sir. I'll just be on my way. <laughs> That's kind of like saying, I don't really care, old man. <laughs> I'll just do my own thing. So can I fix this? I don't think I can. Miles, what are you doing? You don't know the first thing about steam engine repair. It can't be that hard to work out. It if might. you're serious about getting it fixed, I'd suggest looking for someone who knows about this sort of thing first. But if you just want to charge in blindly, be my guest. Yeah, I think I should listen to him because what if I mess up and I blow up everything and then what? I won't be able to look in our house, which might be important. So let's not do that. Let's consider someone who might help me with this. What about the daddy? Isn't he with 
the Steamworks like an engineer or something, isn't he, Dad? I don't know. I have some questions for you, Mr. Harris. Yes, of course. Wait, why did I not confront him? I should have done that. But I can't ask him about the repair, so I guess I, I need to find out somewhere else, but I do want to know these things. The bedding stuff. Mr. Harris, what can you tell me about these? What? How did you- I'm trying to help you and your family. I can't do it if I don't get the entire truth. True. Do you think we could discuss this somewhere more private? I suppose we could. Good. Let's move to the nursery then. All right, let's. So let's speak to him. Shall we continue our conversation, Mr. Harris? Yes, of course. And uh, let's start with kidnapping. Now that your wife is out of earshot, tell me about the kidnapping and what these bedding stubs have to do with it. Right. As I said before, it had already happened when I got home. I had just come from spending the evening at the meadows. I see. I take it your wife isn't impressed by your hobby? <laughs> I promised her weeks ago that I would stop going, but I've had such a good streak lately. The last thing I wanted was to upset her further. Yet it would be foolish of me to just give up on something so promising. Yeah, yeah. It's not smart, though. Suspect? What, what am I going to ask? Can you think of anyone who might want to do you harm by taking your son? Several, I'm afraid. Go on. I haven't exactly had the best of luck, Mr. Fordham. That's why this latest streak was so important to me. I kind of guess that. The truth is, I've gambled away most of my money. I'd uh -huh. take her alone so Miriam doesn't get suspicious. If she ever found out, <laughs> His eyes. it would be over. I can't lose her, Mr. Fordham. I just can't. Where have I heard this before? You know, things would be so much easier if people just talked to each other. I've tried doing business above board, but lately I've had to seek other resources. To tell. What do you mean? I was forced to visit a lending office. The owner was a rather shady Sambo, but <laughs> shady I think he'd Sambo. be easier to deal with than the usual sheenies that run those type of places. So he's kind of racist. Can you believe this guy? Maybe we should just leave the kid be. He'd probably be better raised by wolves. Well, I don't know about that. Who is the owner? Uh, Mr. Lefay. I didn't bother to get his first name. His business is an abattoir row in Chumley. Horrid place. But I was desperate. You think this Mr. Lefay may have taken your son as collateral? Could be. Let's just say there isn't much those type of people wouldn't do to put a mm. crown in their pocket. Well, basically, you have less money than he does, probably. I will get off your high horse, maybe. I Oops. found this button in your son's Once crib. Click the other one, but does it look familiar at all? No, not at all. Do you think the kidnapper might have left it behind? I already know this. It's a distinct possibility. It's not. It's from the bear. I already know this. I found this letter in your bedroom. What can you tell me about it? You went through our things? I'm a private investigator, Mr. Harris. It's part of my job. Of all the... The best the part. insolence! You're upset, I know. But do you want me to find your son, or don't you? <sighs> yes, of course I do. That letter was sent to me by mistake. It was written to my father. Well... If you can even call that writing. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate rich people? Because I really hate rich people. Yeah, you mentioned Your it a father. bunch of times. Doesn't he own the company building the new airship? Yes, that's right. He's been receiving many letters just like that one since the Lygia disaster. But that Devons fellow in particular has sent one every week. Along with a bag of chicken bones and dust. Voodoo. How peculiar. Not only that, he leads a daily protest in front of the construction yard where the HMS Lenore is being built. Trying to halt production. My God! How did I not see this before? <laughs> see what? Devons! He has a grudge against this family because of what happened with the Lygia. I put money on him being involved with the kidnapping somehow as a form of retaliation. Mr. Harris clearly hasn't learned his lesson about betting, it seems. <laughs> That's I'll just true. have to speak with Mr. Devons and see for myself. Although he's kind of an obvious suspect, so I don't know. I don't think he did it. And also, we read that letter and it was uh, kind of badly written, <laughs> like misspelled and all. I don't know if someone like that will be able to, I don't know, kidnap a child without anyone noticing. Doesn't seem likely to me. How goes the construction of the new airship? There have been some complications, but nothing we can't handle. Could you be a bit more specific? <laughs> well, I already told you about the trouble with protesters at the yard. You did. And we're blocked pending Royal Maverick's review of the safety regulations for the prototype etheric diffusion engines. Agitators and red tape aside, we should still be on schedule to have the Lenore finished and in the air by the end of the year. But really, Mr. Fordham, what the deuce does this have to do with finding Charles? You never know. He has a point, you know. 
Those are all the questions I had for now. All right. For now. You stay if you here don't mind, room? Mr. Fordham, oh. I'm going back to the living room. I don't want Miriam getting suspicious. Oh, that's too bad. I wanted to speak to her without you present. But I guess I can't. Well, actually, you can. You just have to do it differently. Send off Mr. Fordham, speak with the missus, and she will fess up. This will result in a new location and person of interest. I'll show you. It's not needed to solve the case, though. So I just wanted to show you that uh, I didn't do this in my original playthrough, but once you send him off to the nursery, you can speak to her about her the letter you found, and she won't speak about it when he's in the room. So you should do that now first, and then continue to speak to him, because when you're done with him, he will turn to his chair and she won't be available anymore. And she gives you a new lead. I have some questions for you, if you're up to answering them, Mrs. Harris. I'll try my best, Mr. Fordham. Which is not necessary to solve the case, by the way, but I just wanted to show you what else you could do. I found this note in your bedroom. What can you tell me about it? What? You had no right to go through my things? Mrs. Harris, I'm just trying to find your son. True that. The sooner I know about any clues I might find, the faster I can proceed with my investigation. <sighs> Fine. I got that note last night from Roland. Who did tell? Let's ask about him. Why would we not? Who is Roland? Roland is a special friend. Hmm, wonder what that means. I see. Oh, don't you judge me, Mr. Fordham. You have no idea what my marriage has been like. Marrying Malcolm wasn't my idea, nor even his. The whole thing was orchestrated by our fathers. They thought merging the two families would be a good business arrangement. Is your marriage an unhappy one, then? I guess it so. wasn't easy at first, and it didn't get any easier as it went on, either. So then, why not end it? Mr. Fordham, we are a respectable family. There are certain considerations. Besides, I had no legal grounds. For all his faults, Malcolm is a very faithful man. Almost frustratingly so. <laughs> then, somewhat unexpectedly, we had Charles. At least that made things bearable. I'm sorry for you, Mrs. Harris. I really am. But I think I should talk to this Roland. I do too. Why? He has nothing to do with this. He might. That's for me to decide. Where can I find him? I, I don't know. I've never been to his home. We usually meet at a hotel. Hmm, I wonder can why. You tell me anything <laughs> that would help me track him down. Well, he's a musician. He plays the piano at some clubs in Gascon, but I don't know which for sure. How about his last name? I... I don't know that either. <laughs> I gather you don't talk much. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to answer that question, Mr. Fordham. So yes. It's a good thing I don't have a stomach anymore, because I can guarantee you its contents would be on the floor right now. Why? So, we spoke to her, and she says... Um... That she has a lover and she meets up with him in some kind of piano bar. We have to find that location somehow. Um, let me think. I want to check to make sure. Hey, Addie. Well, does she know? Addie? What are you let me see. Roland, yes. Addie, did you ever work with or meet a musician in Gascon named Roland? Roland? Yes, a piano player. Oh, of course. That's got to be Roland Devereaux. Yes, I know him. I'd just as soon never hear the name again, if I'm being honest. That bad, huh? He's just an arrogant little twerp. <laughs> Completely full of himself, thinks he's God's gift to music. He really isn't very good. Misses <laughs> notes like you wouldn't believe. He used to throw good. me off the few times I sang with him. Well, he's a person of interest in my current case. Any idea where I can find him? Last I heard, he was playing a regular gig at the Crimson Cat, but that was a few years ago. If he's not still there, they might know where he went. Thanks, dear. That's incredibly helpful. My pleasure. It is. Should we also ask her all this stuff? I don't know. Maybe I should do that in the original playthrough when we get back to her now. Right now. I'll let you get back to your book. I'll just keep this to show you this other lead. I'll uh, see you later, Addie. I look forward to your return. What happens? So, yes, we have the Crimson Cat now, a new location. Ah, the Crimson Cat. One of my favorite underground clubs. Underground. Ooh, I spent some wild nights here. <laughs> Which reminds me, 
I wonder if Stefan is still working at the bar these days. Right, did we not um, go to the bar and talk to Stefano? It said after this. <laughs> you haven't seen that yet, maybe. But I did, I did do that at some point. So I can speak to a young man, which is maybe Roland. And look around, that's it. Excuse me, are you Roland Devereaux? Who's asking? So you Miles are. Fordham, private investigator. I wanted to ask you some questions. Sure, whatever you say. Yeah, he's not friendly at all. Um, I think he likes to speak about himself, what do you think? So, I take it you're a musician? A musician? Am I a musician? Man, you insult me. Ask anyone who hears me tickle those ivories. They'll all tell you. I'm doing the Lord's work. I am more than just a mere musician. I have a purpose on this earth. Oh my God. And that is to move people, to bring joy to their souls. And this is after you've set the piano back to manual, <laughs> right? I don't expect a layman like yourself to understand, least of all a private eye. Your job is exploiting people's misery. I don't know how you can even look at yourself. Oh, it's fairly easy. But then I expect you've never gone more than five minutes without looking at yourself. <laughs> so we don't get along. Are you acquainted with a woman named Miriam Harris? Sure. Acquainted. That's definitely a word you could use. But then I'm also acquainted with about 20 other women in this borough alone. Fascinating. <laughs> could you tell me about Miriam, please? Sure. That woman could talk the ear off a cornstalk. Oh? She said you didn't talk much. That's right, I don't. She talks plenty for the both of us. Always going on about how sick she is of the phony high society types. How glad she is to be with someone real. But hey, she's loaded. <laughs> and she's pretty good in bed, so it's a nice little thing we got going on. How could a guy like this get that many women, I wonder? That's real weird to me. <laughs> Are you aware that Mrs. Harris's son was kidnapped last night? What? Kidnapped? Yes. Do you know anything about it? No, not at all. I mean, I knew she had a son. She wouldn't shut up about him. Why would anyone take someone else's child voluntarily? Uh, oh Are people God. that desperate to have their own little brats? Maybe. So, you didn't do it? I assume you're not a fan of children? Let's just put it this way. I would rather have a hot poker shoved up my ass repeatedly than ever have to deal with a child. That's not a no. Well, that's quite <laughs> specific. There is no way in hell I'm going to tie myself down and give up this great life of mine. If this lady's kid's been stolen, she'll probably leave her husband and want a replacement brat. I'm not going to be that sucker, that's for sure. Thanks, friend. You've really opened my eyes. I think the time has come to exit stage left from Mrs. Harris's life. You're a real piece of work, Roland. I agree. Yeah, I know. I think that's quite enough for now. Wasn't it's about compliment. time. I think we did her a favor. And also, it's a good thing that he doesn't want to settle down because I think it would make someone very miserable. Call me old fashioned, but I've always felt the piano should be played by an actual human. These automated ones just don't have any soul. Oh, automated. But I thought he was a genius playing the piano and it's automated. <laughs> what? This place has been around for quite some time. That well-dressed feline is Red, the official mascot. I'm just gonna look around because I don't know if I'll ever return to this place. Good old Bowlingworth Ale. Unlike so many other things in life, it never lets you down. Well, not while you're drinking it anyway. The next morning is another story entirely. That's how it works. Looks like they've got Bowlingworth, Mill Hopper, and Brooklyn Lager. Not a bad set of beers. Fine beer always served here. Good to know. Good to know. Quite the selection. It rivals even the Angel. Right, so I think that's it. Um, let me see. Case book. Nothing really updated. So we just... We can speak to him. Mm. But that's it. So I think that that's it for this lead. Let's leave this place. See, it's gone now. So that's what you were able to do to get that. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show that. 
And also, can you not help me fix a boiler? Who do I have to ask for that? I can't speak with her though. About being. I a have cheater? some questions. <laughs> this? I found this note in your bedroom. What can you tell me about it? I. I. I've never seen that note before in my life! Are you absolutely sure? Mr. Fordham, you mentioned you valued discretion. I ask you to please exercise some now. Would it be possible to speak about this in private? In another room, perhaps? Out of the question, Mr. Fordham. I shall not leave this sitting room in the company of another man if my husband is not present. Yes, I understand. Let's put the subject on hold for now. Ooh, what a life these rich people earlier. lead. All the money in the world and they're trapped like rats. So maybe I should have sent him off, speak to her, and then speak to him. I found this button in your son's crib. Does it look familiar at all? No, I don't recognize it. It looks like it came from some cheap coat. All right, that was Is that it. what the ruffian who took my baby was wearing? That's what I'm trying to determine. That's all for now, Mrs. Harris. Very well. It's not from the bear at all, no. It's from the jacket. Um, so... This is a kind of dead end too. Oh, I found something. Landing office. And the construction yard. What's my case book say? Speak with Mr. Le Fay. Speak with Art Devins. Alright. So, who do we want to speak to? The crook? Mr. Le Fay? Hello, sir. Looks okay. Welcome to Le Fay Lenders. I'm the owner, Chester Le Fay. Are you looking to take out a loan? Not today, I'm afraid. I'm Miles Ford, I'm a private day. investigator. Look, I don't know what you've heard, but I run a clean business here. I don't need any trouble. And I'm not here to cause any, for the moment. Just keep your nose where it belongs, and we should get along fine. What does that mean? I want to look around. Can I not? He actually has a degree in business from the University of New Britannia? What a waste. <laughs> hmm, that's the latest model Computron. They don't come cheap. Lefay must be doing pretty well for himself. Do you suppose Lefay turns the heat up to put some pressure on his clients? Must be soothing for Lefay to be able to look at. All right. Um. Not much else of interest. Let's just speak to him. I must say, it's not so clean. I'd like to ask you some questions. Fine, but keep it brief. I expected it to look very different. Boiler repair? Why can I ask him? Do you know anything about fixing a steam boiler? Bit of an odd question, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I thought perhaps you might have occasion to fix your heater. I do. But when the occasion comes, I usually just call a repairman. Or someone from the steamworks. Fair enough. Alright, so now. Tell me what you know about Malcolm Harris. Ah, Mr. Harris. Took out a loan about a month ago. Still hasn't paid me back. In fact, he sent along a letter yesterday, saying he was having an emergency and needed more time. I probably should have refused to do business with him. As soon as he walked through the door, I could tell his type. Good. What type is that? Upper class, bored with his life, trying to escape and doing it through vice. In his case, gambling. Well, that's this true. guy is good. Maybe you can pursue money lending <laughs> if the whole private investigator thing doesn't work out. But for some reason, I pitied him and decided to give him the loan anyway. Compassion isn't exactly an asset in this business, you see. Nothing to worry about in your case, then. <laughs> Aside from that, I don't know anything about him. I prefer to keep how much I know about my clients to a minimum. It makes things easier for me. Alright, so... Torn fabric. It kind of looks like this jacket, but... Would you take a child if someone owes you money? That's kind of weird. If you don't send a ransom note, isn't it? Are you aware that Malcolm's son, Charles, was kidnapped last night? I had no idea he even had a son. As I said... I don't ask my clients too many personal questions. Though now you've told me, I suppose that would explain the emergency he mentioned in his letter. Poor guy. Uh, this one? Exactly how much did Mr. Harris borrow from you? Is that relevant to your investigation? It is. It would help to have an idea of exactly how much he owes you, yes. I don't feel comfortable telling you the exact amount, but I will say it was over 500 crowns. A considerable sum. Like I said, I probably shouldn't have done it. But, I'll get the money back, one way or another. What if he kidnapped his own son and sent a ransom note to his father and his father needs to pay the money so he can pay this man back? Could that be it? What's your policy regarding people who don't pay their loans back? There are a few options. For the first three months or so, I'll send them a letter reminding them. After that, I start to threaten them with legal action. 
You wouldn't believe some of the things people do to avoid paying back their loans. One client went so far as to fake his own death. <laughs> do you ever employ any more unusual methods? Now wait just a minute. I see where this is going. You do. Mr. Fordham, I'm a family man myself. If you're implying that I would stoop to kidnapping someone's child as collateral... I never said that, Mr. LeFay. Look, I have a family to consider. I'm not about to go get my hands dirty when there's plenty of legitimate ways to handle the situation. Alright, I believe you. But you do wear a vest and it's kind of suspicious. Take a look at this piece of fabric. Does it look familiar to you? Sure, it looks like it came from a jacket. In fact, yes, it's the same fabric as the jacket I'm wearing. Exactly. Would you mind if I took a look at your jacket? Sure, not a problem. Here. So he's probably innocent then. Or is wearing a different jacket. Mm. Turning it around. I don't see any tears or something. Should I see that? I can't do anything with it. So I guess he's clear. No tears in mine, huh? Not a one. You clearly take good care of your clothing. I don't mean to discourage you, Mr. Fordham, but I've seen a lot of people with this style of jacket. Hell, even Malcolm has one. I remember he was wearing it when he came in here. Interesting. See. Thank you for the information, Mr. LeFay. D could I not look at his closet? I think I could. Alright. Uh, so, not much here. Let's leave. I don't know, but I believe this guy, kind of, and he does look like a criminal at all to me. So that disappeared, so he's done, but I can still go there, so I don't know why that is. Yeah, and so we say to Harris and his cronies, no, we will not stand for this. Too many have died to allow this to continue. Steam Tech must be stopped. <laughs> has come to reject steam machines. They take our jobs, they take our families, they take our lives. We won't stand for this injustice any longer. How long is this bitch? Do I have to do this? Oh, I can do stuff. I was waiting for it to be done. Has no concern for the people who died aboard. Well, someone certainly wasn't shy about making their opinion known. I agree with that. So I need to speak to him. The only thing that matters to him is lying in his pockets with a... Pardon me, are you Arthur Devins by any chance? Yes. Who are you? Miles Fordham, private investigator. Could I ask you a few questions? Uh, guess so, yeah. Um, oh, did he write the letter? You recognize this letter, Mr. Devins? How'd you get that? That wasn't meant for you. I know. I found it at the home of Mr. Malcolm Harris. He tells me you've been sending quite a few of these to his father. Me and everyone else would have had someone killed by that devil machine. I'm not the only one, you know. Perhaps not, but he told me you were the most persistent. <laughs> I would have expected him to speak very differently if that is the letter he wrote. What have you got against the Harris family? Family? Don't know nothing about the family. The only one I got a problem with is Clyde Harris, the one who owns this yard. He's just like all those other rich bastards with their heads in the clouds. The man don't care about the dead. He just wants to make as much money as he can. I'm just trying to make him realize how wrong he is. Bones and dust. Oh, right. He did send that with his letter. Do you practice voodoo, Mr. Devon? See, it's voodoo. What? The chicken bones and dust you send along with your letters. It's a voodoo spell meant to cause bad luck in business. Quite a convenient solution, wouldn't you say? I... I don't know what you're on about. Come now, Mr. Devins. I'd appreciate it if you didn't think I was stupid. All right, fine. I went to go see one of them magic women in Gascombe. She told me about the spell and what I needed to do. I don't believe in the stuff, but I thought maybe if I used it, I could scare Harris enough to get him to stop making the new airship. Well, I don't mean to be one to put a damper on your amateur witch. <laughs> amateur. It doesn't seem to be doing you much good. Kind of honest. Do you know anything about the kidnapping of Charles Harris? Charles Harris? Who's that? Clyde Harris's grandson. I I didn't even know we had a grandson. And I'm just telling I everyone. I can't believe someone with a grandkid, a family, would want more flying death in the air. 
How many more people have to die before someone realizes that steam machines are evil? <sighs> people will kill their own mams for a crown these days. All right. What about this? Why are you out here protesting? Because what Harris Construction's doing ain't right. This is a kind I of lost my question. wife in the Ligia crash. And I'm not the only one, neither. Hundreds of people were affected by that disaster. And now these bastards are making another airship. It's like a slap in the face to everyone who died. I just can't understand it. What do you hope to accomplish by protesting? Simple. We want construction of the Lenore stop and a full investigation into the Ligia disaster. Not only that, we want compensation for our losses. Royal Maverick took care of all the families of those on board, but the families of the ones in the park didn't get a single copper. It just isn't fair. We aim to make things right. After that, it'll just be a matter of time before people realize that there's no future in steam tech, and they'll call the whole thing off. I got that. Ah, the innocence of the downtrodden. I wish I could be as naive as them. It would have made my life a lot easier. <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of tender. You must have loved your wife very much. Are you joking? I loved her more than there are stars in the sky. She was my whole world, Mr. Fordham, the light of my life. It's been nothing but cold and dark since she was killed. You're married, aren't you, Mr. Fordham? I see a ring on your finger. I am, yes. Then take my advice. Appreciate every moment you have with her. You never know when she'll be ripped out of your life, leaving you with nothing. You know, this fellow was actually pretty wise. <laughs> Maybe we misjudged him. Oh, kind of depressing. <laughs> Does this piece of fabric look familiar to you? Looks like it came from some fancy jacket. Fancy. The type you'd expect to see on the snobs in Leon. I could never afford clothes like that in a million years. You never know. What about this? You recognize this button? Can't say I do, but it looks handmade. I wonder how long it will be before the poor soul who crafted that button gets booted into the street and replaced with some steam belching contraption. He has a way of making every conversation about that. I'm not going to ask about himself because uh, it's kind of boring. Good day to you, Mr. Devins. You too, Mr. Fordham. Although I don't want to be unkind or anything. Um... Now that is an impressive piece of machinery. But the way this gate is set up, I think trespassers should get an award for being able to breach the fortress. Don't these people have jobs they need to go to? Apparently not, that's why they're angry. Elect Hart Leroy, the man of the people. I think that's preaching to the choir around here. All right, they are kind of noisy, so I'm gonna go. Rich people really do like Lad! Uh, so I can hear myself think again about what I have to do. You'll need to track down Linda Walker. But I don't really know how. According to Chester Lefay, the stealth jacket from which the torn fabric comes from is extremely common even Mr. Harris owns one. I need to confront him with that. I borrowed a large amount of money, sent telegram saying he had an emergency to get more time to pay the loan back. So what if I go speak to him and maybe he'll leave the room again and I can speak to his wife first if he does oh, that. Oh, Mr. Fordham. Oh, thank God you're back. Do you mean What's that? going on? A butler just brought this in. He found it stuck to the gate outside. Is it a ransom note? Harris family, we have your son. If you ever want to see him again, you must stop building the no airship. We are not joking. <laughs> I don't think that they did this. I have some questions for you, Mr. Harris. Yes, of course. Let's leave the room, please. What is your opinion of this ransom note? It's obvious who sent it, Mr. Fordham. That it is. Why are you wasting your time here? Go arrest Mr. Devins! Those are all the questions I had for- All right. But it's too bad. But let's take a look at his closet then. And see if we can find something over here. Hmm. You don't suppose. Right. So he does have one. And he has How about there. that? It matches the piece of torn fabric perfectly. So... This means... It could mean many things. The only thing that's certain is that a piece of this jacket ended up on the floor of the nursery. True Seems that. like something worth asking Mr. Harris about. Alright, I was gonna do that anyway. Let's do that. Make a bit of haste, please. I have some questions. Yes. Mr. Harris, do you recall the torn piece of fabric I found in the nursery? 
Yes, what about it? As it sure. turns out, one of the jackets in your wardrobe has a tear exactly the same size and shape as this one. Would you care to tell me how that happened? That... that can't be. I'm afraid it is, so explain it. I... I have no explanation. Really? The truth is, I haven't worn that jacket in weeks. I've no idea how it was torn. Are you suggesting someone else took your jacket and wore it when the child was taken? I don't know. Perhaps someone is trying to make it look as though I... But... but that's absurd. Why would I kidnap my own son? I didn't know. Why indeed, Mr. Harris. Why indeed? You really think he kidnapped his own son, Miles? Seems more likely he was set up. But he also doesn't strike me as a terribly good parent. Maybe it would serve him right to be blamed for this. We've done our part. The police can handle the search for the missing baby. Really? Is that it? No, you're lying. Those are all the questions I had for now. All right. Is that the end of the case? I don't want it to be. I still have to find Linda. Returns up to an accused Malcolm Harris. Oh, so now he's a suspect. Let me see. Part of kidnapped child, fabric from his jacket found a crime scene in heavy debt due to gambling loans. But I don't think he did it. Can I speak to you? I have some questions for you if you're up to answer. Did you read the rest? No. Malcolm wouldn't let me. He said I was already too upset. That's all for now, Miss. Very well. Oh, alright, so you're no help? Hmm. What now? So I can go to Upton and accuse him, but I don't want to do that yet. I have to still find Linda. But I don't really know how. Do I have leads? Oh, the button is from the bear. See, that's confusing. They keep saying it's from the jacket, but it's not. And, uh, oh wait, I need to fix that boiler. That's all I need to do, but who knows about that. Should I just try it or maybe read a book about it? Would you know? Probably hey, Addie. Not. Here I am. Seeing you come home always puts a smile on my face. You sound very fake. <laughs> Who's, who speaks like that? Addie? What do you need? Let's see. Compliment her. Boiler repair. Addie, you wouldn't happen to have any manuals on repairing steam engines in your library, would you? Thinking of changing careers? No, there's just a boiler that needs repairing, and I need to figure out how to do it. A boiler? What kind of engine is it? I'm not sure, but it had Whitney 200 embossed on the side. Oh, of course. That's one of the most common steam engines around, used in practically everything. In fact, the player piano at the Firkin and Fryer had one, and that thing was always going out of alignment. Can you fix if it? If that's all that's happened with this one, I know how to fix it. Used to have to do it all the time. Adelaide Fordham, you are just full of surprises. I agree with that. Where is this boiler? Not terribly far. It's a townhouse on St. Agnes in Livingston. Let's go then. I could use some fresh air. So I do need a help from time Not to time. Not quite a player piano, but it shouldn't be too tough. Would you like me to walk you through it, or would you prefer I fix it myself? I don't know. Uh, so this is kind of like a puzzle what we can do. So why don't we try it? Please, tell me what I need to do. Oh, All right, let's take a closer look. Sorry. Right, the first thing you'll want to do is open up the firebox door and light that coal on fire. And this it'll one? be a good idea to open the engine hatch too, so you can keep an eye on it. Fine fuel source. That was easy enough. What's next? Now you want to open the flue and close the fire door so the water in the tank starts boiling. Once that happens, steam will enter the dome and that big pressure indicator will start going up. Assuming the steam valve is completely shut, of course. And if it isn't? Then the pressure will be transferred into the engine and the small indicator will go up. You want to use the valves to balance out the pressure and get just the right amount into the engine before starting it up. And what is the right amount? If I remember correctly, it was three on the small gauge. Less than that, and the engine won't start. Any higher will tear the thing apart. All right, here goes nothing. Do I have to remember all of this? Yes, you do. So, in case your memory isn't photogenic, I'll go over the instructions again. First, open the flue and close the fire door so the water in the tank starts boiling. Uh, small valve 
After that, steam will enter the dome and that big pressure indicator will start going up. Then the pressure will be transferred into the engine and the small indicator will go up. Use the valves to balance out the pressure and get the right amount into the engine, which is 3 on the small gauge. Do this and the boiler will start working instead of exploding. And that is what we want or else it is over for this lead. Nice work, Miles. Maybe if the private investigator thing doesn't work out, we can start our own engine repair service. Apparently. Boilers are a lot like people, you know. They need to let off steam occasionally, or else they explode. <laughs> You'd do well to remember that, dear. Anyway, I need to be off for my appointment with Mrs. Lapone. I'll see you tonight. All right, thanks for the help again. So let's ask for the key. Yes. Fixed your boiler. Fixed the boiler for you. What? Are you serious? I am. It's pretty pathetic when some Yahoo off the street does a better <laughs> job than the people <laughs> paid to do oh, this thanks. sort of thing. I owe you, friend. You Might do. I take you up on that offer and get that spare key to the apartment? Oh, right. You said you were a private detective, didn't you? Uh, did Mrs. Walker do something wrong? Is she in trouble? I'm not entirely sure yet, which is why I need to take a look inside her apartment. I see. Well, I wouldn't normally do this, but you did me a great service by fixing the boiler. I can't just give you the spare key, but I can let you into oh, the apartment. Fine. That'll be just fine. Thank you. Great, now I can look around for clues. What in the ether? Cripes, did a tornado come through this place or what? Looks as though she definitely left in a hurry. I wonder if she planned on ever coming back. I'll be waiting for you in the kitchen, Mr. Fordham. Just let me know when you're done looking around. She is suspicious. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to have my fill of plants and... <laughs> There's a handwritten note here. Valerian mixed with chamomile. Sedative deep effects. Sleep. Deep sleep. Right, I wasn't that Seems Mrs. Dropped. Walker's an amateur herbalist. Maybe not so amateur. I'd love to see the look on Mrs. Davis's face if she knew it wasn't a spirit that possessed her. <laughs> In fact, let's go tell her so I can <laughs> see it. You've gotten fairly misanthropic in your death, Bill. Yeah, true. Have I? I hadn't noticed. I hadn't noticed. But how is this connected to the flower uh, case, I wonder? Because don't we also need to... Torn apart. Find she took most death. everything. Though it doesn't appear she had much to take. Torn apart. Oh, I already said that. I mean the first case, which when Bill well, died... The books she left behind are all trashy romance novels. Why wouldn't she take those? They're clearly, They're clearly the best the ones. Best ones. Mm. That bit of torn wallpaper looks almost deliberate. Interesting. So there's something behind it. What do you know? She hid a book behind the wallpaper. Looks like a journal. I love journals. They tell everything. April 5th. I don't believe it. Can it be true? At tonight's meeting, I struck up a conversation with Henrietta. Charles Harris was born the day Alexander died. And he has blue eyes. Oh... I know I shouldn't jump to conclusions, but this is too perfect to be a fluke. To be sure, I need to find something of Alexander's appropriate for an infant, maybe his old bear. Charles loved Barney. Henrietta told me she's never seen him react with such joy to any of his other, of his other playthings. There's no doubt now in my mind. Charles Harris is the reincarnation of my beloved Alexander. At last, we can be together again. At last, I can seek his forgiveness. I just need to find a way to take him from his false parents without getting dear Henrietta in trouble. Oh, she did it! I had a nightmare again last night. Alexander's cries of, why did you do it, mother? Alexander's cries of, why did you do it, mother, were nearly too much to bear. When I have him again, I can finally explain that I couldn't do anything to stop him. Thomas was a monster and I was at my wit's end. This Samuel had helped me so much and there was no turning back once he had consumed the tainted pie. How was I to know Alexander's friend would take it and he would arrive home early? Would take ill. Watching my boy share the poisoned meal with his father was the worst moment of my life. I must get him back. Oh my god, she did it. Finally, after months of thinking, I have a plan. Samuel's instruction on the nature of plans has been the key. I will visit Henrietta tonight at the Harris residence and prepare everything. It must look as though a burglar entered the nursery and tore his coat. In two nights, I'll have my baby again. 
Well, this is pretty damn incriminating. That it is. I'll say. Now we just need to figure out where she's gone, as well as how she managed to drug Mrs. Davis. So she did it. Oh, we've got you now, Linda. Thought you could be clever and get away with the baby, did you? Bill? Well, you thought wrong. With Fordham and Leger on the case, the only thing you're getting is a one-way trip to jail. Hey, I'm on the case, too. Bill? And the worst part is how sloppy she was. I mean, really, she couldn't think to pick up a button? She might as well have left a signed confession in the crib for all the good it did her. <laughs> Bill, would you just shut up, for God's sake? Huh? Is everything all right? Oops. Yes, everything's just fine. I, I just stubbed my toe on the bed frame. You ought to be more careful, Mr. Fordham. Well, thanks for that. Sorry, Miles. You know how I get when we're close to solving a case. You always do this. I need to concentrate, and I can't hear myself think with you yapping away. Right. Sorry. I'll keep it to myself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. I agree But you have that. to admit, she <laughs> really would have saved us the trouble if... Oh, Bill. Right, right. Not another peep. As you were. <sighs> Still not done. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my... Oh, I can look at it. You're actually going to dig through that mess? I sure hope it's worth it. Me too. Oh, wait, what am I doing? What's this? A receipt with yesterday's date. One-way train ticket to Pierre in Lorraine. Departed this afternoon. Well, that's where she went then. Thought she could get away easy, it seems. Well, I hate to disappoint her. Clue edit. What's this? Oh, I can just put it away, that's all. Solomon stitching. Oh, that's where she works, right? All right. A receipt with yesterday. Can I leave this place? It's a boy. Can't be more than seven or eight years old. If that's Linda's son, why would she leave this behind? Because she thinks she's got the real thing again. Exactly. Hmm, nice patterns. I wonder if Linda makes all her own clothes. Why can't I look well, at all these Well, at least paintings? that painting cheers the place up a little bit. Does it, though? It looks kind of dark and depressing. A fairly recent model. Linda must have spent a good portion of... All right, so I think we have location for her. We can find our kidnapper, if I'm not mistaken. And we solved another case, which I'm very happy about because it's very well, I hope you were able to find out what you needed. I did. Yes, thank you for your cooperation. We're choosing the wrong things to say and stuff like that. But I don't see train station or anything. Wait. But do I... Let me see. Still be time to intercept her arrival. Yeah, but where did she go? You didn't write that down. Then I walk around down Valerian and chamomile the perfect sedative. Could she have dropped Mrs. Davis D? Yes, she did that. T details are believed that Charles Harris is the reincarnation of her dead son Alexander. She intends to get them to child and reclaim him as her own. Received receipt for when we train to get to Pierre was found to Pierre was found on the floor of Lynn's apartment. So I think maybe I have to speak to Upton about that. Could that be it? Intercept a train or something or catch her? Can we talk? Go on. Let me see. Wrap up I'm case. Ready to wrap it. Okay. Oh, I cannot. Now I solve Actually, it. okay. No. So I need to find That's her it. some other way. But how? <laughs> I don't know. Can I steal the blimp? <laughs> Probably not. I'll speak to him about the ransom note. Mr. I think. Mr. Devins. I've never seen that. Are you sure? Absolutely. It's as I told you. I had nothing to do with that boy's kidnapping. I didn't even know he existed until you told me. Remember? Yeah. And that note conveniently showed up right after you had that conversation. I know. Let him stew in his own lies. His unique way of spelling is all the evidence we need to tie him to the note. Very well, Mr. Devins. Forget I asked. Good day to you. No. This author Devon's Joker is bad news. Not only is he making threats to the Harris family, he also has the nerve to send a ransom note. Oh, is he not a suspect? We have enough evidence to pin the crime on him, I think. Pin on him. The police can deal with the headache of actually finding the baby. 
Yeah, but it's Linda. I want to fight Linda. So no. Mark my word. The HMS Lenore no, will not. Wow. I really don't. We yeah, have another suspect now, probably. Yeah, Arthur Devins. Disgruntled victim of Ligeia disaster or Ligeia. Hates Clyde Harris, dabbles in dark religious practices, send a ransom note. But he didn't do it. So, how am I gonna find Linda? What about speaking to the old granny about her being drugged? Would that be it? Because I don't have anywhere else to go. I, I keep calling her granny Hello because again. I keep forgetting her name. <laughs> She's kind of disrespectful. I have some questions maybe. for you, Mrs. Davis. All right. I'm sorry about that. This? Mrs. Davis, where did you get the tea you drank on the night of the kidnapping? From my own private supply. I drink a blend of hibiscus and elderberry. It clears the mind and puts me more in tune with the spirits. I'll let you did it taste sleep. off to you? No. Why do you ask? Because I think your tea may have been drugged. <gasps> Wait, are you saying? I believe Mrs. Walker used her own herbs to drug your tea knowing you'd drink a cup the following evening. She then snuck into the house after you'd fallen asleep and took the child. Oh my word, I never would have thought. I know, Mrs. Davis, but don't worry. I'm doing everything I can to find her. Oh, may the spirits guide you, Mr. Fordham. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Davis. Oh, you're very welcome. Is this what I needed to do? I hope so. Well, I'd say we have everything we need to prove it was Linda yes. who drugged Mrs. Davis's tea and took the child. And we know where she's going, too. Upton will want to know about this as soon as possible. So that's all I needed to do. Now Linda's also a suspect. I think. Yes, and she did it. Seamstress. Friend of Henrietta Davis believes Charles Harris is a reincarnation of her late son Alexander on her way to Pierre Lorraine. I'll be going now, now I can Mrs. wrap Davis. it up. Me but that's kind of weird because didn't I already have enough to say that she did it? Why would I need to tell that old lady that she's been drugged? That's kind of... I don't know. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. Not very efficient. Wrap I'm it up. Ready. Oh. It's Linda. It's Linda Walker. Who is she? A seamstress with a friend of the Harris family nanny. She took the child because she believes he's the reincarnation of her deceased son, whom she accidentally poisoned. <laughs> My god. I'll find a journal explaining her motive at her apartment, as well as the plants she used to drug Mrs. Davis. But what about the broken window in the nursery? All part of a false crime scene she set up to draw our attention away from her. Excellent work, Miles. Did you manage to find out where Mrs. Walker is I now? I even did that. Yes. I found a receipt for a one-way train ticket to Pierre, which departed this afternoon. Fantastic. We can send a telegram to the train station and have her arrested upon arrival. You've done extremely well for them. Snelling could only hope to have a detective as good as you again. You flatter me. <laughs> then I'd better stop before your head gets any bigger. All right, Miles. I'll go through the proper channels and report your information as an anonymous tip. Too bad. And of course, I'll dip into the department's Good Samaritan Fund to get you proper compensation for your work. For now, go home to your wife. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. Yeah, something more exciting, maybe next time. Welcome to Lorraine. An awfully cute baby you got there. It ain't hers. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, this is my son, Alexander. It's not. Alexander. That's a good name. Strong name. Yes, thank you. I, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm in a bit of a hurry and I need to get to my hotel. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I won't keep you any longer, Mrs. Walker. Oh, he's the police. Thank you. I... Wait. How did you know my name? I didn't. It was a lucky guess. But now, seeing as I know your name, oh, allow sheriff. me to tell you mine. I'm Sheriff Zeke Dollarhide. Linda Walker, you are under arrest. For the kidnapping of Charles Harris. Surrender the child and come with me. No, no, you've got it all wrong. This is my son. This is my Alexander. It's not. Ma'am, please don't make this difficult. Come along to the station and we'll get this all sorted out. Thank you for watching. Curious what happens next? Subscribe to my page so you don't miss anything.